Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 10. We've reached double digits in this series finally for the Quebec Nordiques relocation franchise mode where we moved the Arizona Coyotes, sent them up north, and well, we're potentially working towards some success here now with this team just in the third season. Second season of relocation, third season of the franchise mode because we did have to play out one year with the Coyotes, but today we actually are going to get to round two of the playoffs. We have made it past the first round, which in turn is just amazing. We beat Buffalo in a seven game series. I think we ended up winning three in a row to win this series. Um, if I'm not mistaken. If you haven't gone and checked out the last episode, go up into that top corner of the video right now. And yeah, we uh, we ended up capping off that series by winning three in a row. So we can't play with that much luck if we're actually planning on doing well in this series against Toronto, as Toronto is one of the two teams, along with the San Jose Sharks, who finished above us in the standings. And we did have a comment on the last video here and this last comment here came from carter green saying trade gaucher and jurasek both haven't grown enough i agree with that and we will come back to that comment maybe this episode probably in the next one um as long as things go well but if we get knocked out here early on by the toronto maple leafs which is a very real possibility then we will potentially be uh be moving on to the draft this episode if things don't go well but you know, I think we stand a really good chance against this Toronto team. I mean, yes, their first forward line is absolutely stacked, but I'm not super worried about it, to be honest. I think they're going to potentially crush us in the simulation. They did well all year in that category, but apart from that, I think we are ready to go here. So we are going to be form formatting this episode similar to the last one. I hope you guys enjoyed that last one as, uh, again, we were able to take on Buffalo and win it, but we're going to slow sim everything. We're going to take our time on it and hopefully, you know, we get rewarded for it. So I believe we are completely healthy apart from Barrett Hayton, but we got to play two games in Toronto to start off this series. So first period of the first game, it's a one nothing Toronto lead. They outshoot us 15 to nine and Austin Matthews gets the opener for the series. Second period, it's a 1-1 game as Joe Pavelski ties it up. 23-17 to for the Leafs heading into the third period. And well, let's see what the third period holds here as the slow sim gets underway. Power play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Is it going to convert? Mm, wow, that was a really long power play and it did not convert. So that probably boosted our team morale a bit. And it pays off as Victor Soderstrom gets the goal. But then TJ Brody ties it right up immediately 2-2 game now 31 to 24 on shots shots getting traded either way here and this one very well might be heading to overtime in game one unless we have a late goal which we do not so we head to overtime trust the sim trust the sim power play for toronto uh it doesn't convert oh my goodness man this is uh this is a crazy overtime and it's over who's gonna be the winner and it's the Toronto Maple Leafs. William Nylander gets the overtime winner right in the slot, too. And yeah, that one stings, but a very good game overall. Very much a playoff game, and Toronto just dominated that game to come out on top. So, not really surprised. The Maple Leafs have an absolutely amazing team on their hands. So do we, though. I would argue that our team is just as talented, maybe a little bit younger. That's the only difference is that we do have those youngsters as our like top and core players for the future. But I mean, we still have some vets that should be getting it done against these other guys and they're just not right now. So heading into game two, hopefully we can uh, see a slight change in that. And first period of game two, it's a 1-1 game. Mitch Marner opens the scoring on the power play just a minute in. And then Claude Giroux gets his ninth goal of the playoffs to tie this one at one. 10 to 9 on shots for the Nordiques after the first two. Second period, it's a 2-2 game. William Nylander scores yet again in this series to make it a 2-1 Toronto game. And then Claude Giroux gets his 10th goal of the playoffs. 10 goals. We've only played nine games. This is insane. He is actually scoring at such an insane rate that he's low-key just carrying this team. So anyways, 25 to 20 on shots heading into the third period. Let's see how the simulation treats us in the third. Toronto seems to be right there neck and neck with us. And really, they're the team that is better at this point as John Tavares gets a goal and then Mitch Marner gets a goal. Oh my goodness, man. Quebec, you just collapse and we don't get any depth scoring. So... 
I mean, to be fair, Toronto hasn't really gotten any depth scoring either. All of their goals have pretty much come from their top end players, apart from TJ Brody. And what can you say? When Nylander's putting two pucks in the net a game, you're going to lose to the Leafs. So pretty brutal first two games, Sim. We lose by one and three goals, and the Leafs again just dominate the three stars. So considering how good the first two periods went in that game, we really blew it in the third period, give up three unanswered goals, and well, we're going to have to do better than that heading home. We have to win both games on home ice. Now Carolina's up as well. San Jose, Vegas tied, Colorado, Minnesota tied. So interesting first series, or interesting second round series, sorry. Um, But let's see, Ian Crane. Okay, we've got some, uh, I, I guess Tucson's still in the playoffs as well. They are in a tied position right now. Okay, not terrible. Not terrible at all. Is anybody actually growing, though? That's the real question. Like, if Ian Crane shot up, I would be happy he hasn't, obviously. Go figure. These guys just, like, like the comment just said, trade these guys. They're not growing. And, yeah, um, you know, that's a pretty accurate accurate recommendation of what's actually going on here. Ort Meyer's playing quite well, apart from only two assists in nine games. Um jurisdic has been better, but again, just no statistical growth. I just, I don't understand it. So anyways, that kind of stings that, you know, we have these top end guys that just aren't really growing and it sucks that we can't do more about it. But at the same time, I don't want to go and just completely load up our forward core either because we've pretty much done that over the past two or three years. So maybe we end up looking into defensemen here if we do have to end up doing that. But yeah, there's some interesting looking defensemen to say the least out of this group of guys. Um, even guys like, you know, Byron Potty that we could get later on could be really good. Or even like Dvorak or players like that. I, I'm interested in those guys. There are a lot of first round options here too, though, which we won't necessarily be taking on. Ortiz looks like he could be amazing, so maybe we'll look to replace Gaucher with him. Um, Kubina was also an NHL ready guy. So again, small centers, but man, if these guys actually turn out to be anything, it would totally be worth it to trade down and draft them kind of thing. So there's so many, there's so many guys in this draft that I'm interested in and I don't know if we're going to get. So anyways, that's enough of the draft. We're down to nothing right now. And our team has to focus here because not going to lie, we've been pretty garbage against the Leafs up to this point. So Maybe we shuffle the lines a bit. That's what I'm thinking right now anyways. I'm thinking we give uh, give some of our guys like Shane Wright um, a little bit more opportunity here. Maybe swap him for like uh, Tarasenko, really get that first line just boosted. Um, maybe not. Where does that work well? The thing though is that Claude Giroux just doesn't have any line mates really playing well with him right now either. So I think what we're going to do... We're going to boost Bedard down for now. We're going to play Bergeron with Thorson, And, I mean, Thorson hasn't scored yet either, though. So that's the other issue that I'm kind of looking at here going, uh, hello, what are we going to do about this? Because we, we need some production here. So I think this is good for now for the lineups for what we're going to do. Tarasenko, Giroux, right? That's a really good line. Bedard, Bergeron, Keller. A little bit smaller of a line, but should still be very good. And then, yeah, I'm... I don't understand why this lineup can't perform. It's such a good lineup. And Toronto's just playing us to perfection right now. So, now with that said and done, a bit of roster management and draft overview. But we head into game three with an absolute desperate need for a win here. So... Here we go. Game number three in Quebec. We go down three nothing. Oh my goodness. We're going to be hitting the draft this episode, aren't we? Second period. It's a three, one game, but I would say too little too late. Most likely unless the Nordiques can really turn it around here in the next 15 minutes or so, which they cannot. Matthews gets another goal. Then yeah, it's, it's over. It's over, man. Like we are down three, nothing backs against the wall here at this point. I don't think, look, we had so much power play time. Nobody converts. Why is that the case? I just, I don't understand why we cannot put power play. Come on, man. Come on. We're getting killed. Oh, okay. You know what, Toronto? You want to you wanna kill us 6-1 like that? We're going to show up next game. I'm not impressed with that, especially in front of our home fans. 
Quebec, get your act together, guys, because this is making you look real silly right now. So, this is not good. Okay. Barrett Hayton is back in the lineup, too, so that's good to see. But, like I've been saying, too little, too late. I don't think we are in a very good position at this point to have any real chance in this series anymore um which is unfortunate because i thought this was going to be a much closer much more rivalry based kind of matchup but we we almost choked it against buffalo sabers as well so heading into game number four if we actually win this game i'll be a little surprised toronto's just playing at such an insane level right now that yeah First period, 2-0 Quebec lead. Okay, power play goals on both of them from Bergeron and Thorison within the span of about a minute. And 11-7 on shots in the first. Second period, it's a 4-1 Quebec lead as Perron makes it 3-1. Reeves make a, a, makes it, sorry, Perron makes it 3-0. Reeves makes it 3-1. And then Pavelski makes it 4-1. 22-17 heading into the third period. I swear to God if the Nordiques choke this, I'm going to laugh so hard. 5-3 on three power play for the Leafs does not convert at all and then morgan riley scores for quebec five to one game so the nordiques do show up in front of the home fans for at least one game so we don't get completely humiliated mitch marner makes it a five to two game but my goodness gracious me this has just been not really the performance we were looking for we're gonna have to win three more to advance to the next round and that just seems really unlikely David Prom, Morgan Riley, Cal Pedersen all get the stars of the game there. So, um, five to two win. That's probably the only win we're gonna get. Um, the Hurricanes sweep the Caps. Vegas goes up three one against San Jose, and Minnesota goes up three one against Colorado. So, I mean, if we can manage to knock Toronto out, I would assume that San Jose's out, but they aren't necessarily yet. So, there's two teams there. Like we're playing off against one of the best teams we're going to play all playoffs and if we can continue to win then it makes this series interesting but heading into game number five it would be nice to see another good performance from the nordiques but let's see what happens two to one first period bergeron gets on the board on the power play nick ritchie ties it at one on the power play and then vladimir tarasenko makes it a two to one game 13 to four in shots that's insane um i can't believe we actually let in a goal on just four shots, but that's pretty bad. So second period, Clayton Keller and Shane Wright get the goals for Quebec. Austin Matthews made it a three to two game there for a second, but then Shane Wright, you know, really kind of stamps Quebec's um, authority on this game. And hopefully, ooh, John Tavares on the power play makes it a four to three game. Hopefully we can hold out, but no, we can't. <sighs> Anderson scores there. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, this is technically an elimination game here too, and if we give up another goal, it's over. So, power play for the Nordiques. Quebec, you've done me dirty. Come on, what are you doing? And 53 seconds left. Okay, we're heading to overtime. It's headphone time because this is game number five. We're down three to one. And if I choke this, I'm going to laugh so hard. And I simulated it. Are you kidding me? And we won. <laughs> oh, I hit A instead of start on my controller. And I scared the bejesus out of myself. So, um, 36 to 29 on shots there. We win in overtime. The headphones were useless. The headphones distracted me. And it didn't matter as we win right on the 10 minute mark there. Oh my goodness gracious, how did we manage to pull that off? Um, Shane Wright gets first start of the game there too. So 5-4, to four, very tight overtime victory. And we're still alive somehow. Do not ask me how. I cannot explain to you how we survived that game. Um, we got lucky, to be honest. So anyways, heading into what will be game number 6 now. We force at least a game 6 against the Leafs. First period, it's a 2-1 to one Quebec lead. William Nylander gets the opener. Bergeron and Giroux showing their experience in the playoffs, putting two pucks in on just nine shots. And we lead after the first. Second period, it's still a 2-1 to one game. We keep Toronto to a scoreless second period. And, well, 
heading into the third period here, again, we've just got to hold the lead. I don't know if we're going to do it. Toronto's getting a lot of shots right now. And, well, we'll see as this third period continues to play out. Lots of shots, lots of hits. And Toronto does tie it. Abramov with nine minutes left. They're coming hard. Power play for the Nordiques. Does not convert. And down to the last four minutes here. And two, one, and they score. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it. I knew that was going to happen. I'm like, what are the odds? I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to play it. I, I'll trust we make it to overtime. Toronto scores with 29 seconds left. Are you kidding me, Austin Matthews? Seriously, man. So Toronto makes it past the second round. That doesn't seem very character of them, but they did it. They did it. They beat us, and what seemed like a rampage of uh, a comeback that was starting turns out to be... Instead, a Toronto victory in the last waning seconds of Game 6. And that will eliminate the Quebec Nordiques from the Stanley Cup playoffs in their first ever run. They make it to Round 2, make it to Game 6 of Round 2, and then give it up in the last seconds. So, that stings. It's too bad, but, um, you know, the team didn't do all that bad this season. We uh, finished third place, almost made it to the third round of the playoffs. Had a pretty good run, to be completely honest, too. But looks like everybody's made it through at this point. We were the last series, as all the other series only went to four or five games. Minnesota and Vegas will be playing for the Western Final. And Carolina and Toronto will be playing for the East. So, looking at our uh, our player stats and our kind of team performance here, we did not do bad by any means. Shane Wright was a point per game. Um, Clayton Keller, Chicher, and Soderstrom... Those guys all just under Thorson and Bedard, unfortunately, did not do so well in the playoffs, which is too bad to see, especially since these guys have such high upside still. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll see some more, some more continued growth from these guys in the future. Obviously, Shane Wright looking like the best option we really have on this team right now. And our other guys are starting to get a bit older, guys like Claude Giroux, guys like... Um, Patrice Bergeron there. They're up there in age, no question about it, but they also definitely contributed on us getting to where we did this year. So I think that is not where we're going to wrap it up by any means. We're only 17, 18 minutes into this entire recording. Um, so we are going to get to the draft this episode too. We're going to be making some moves. I would assume that we're probably moving some contracts, moving some players. Um, just to clear up some more cap space as of course we only have about a million bucks in cap right now the guys i'm specifically looking at would probably be along the lines of morgan riley or um why am i not seeing him on here oh vladimir tarasenko oh <laughs> that's why i'm not seeing him on here because his morale went down that's not spectacular um Shoot, Tarasenko drops way off from where I was expecting him to. So yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Ortmeier, Yaskins, Blay, Larson. You know, there's some guys down here that are leading the team, but not a whole ton of prospects, to be completely honest. So I would assume that Gaucher and potentially Jurasek are going to get traded in this upcoming draft here. We've got some guys like Lazowski and Silvergard who are looking like pretty hot prospects now um and we'll see what they can do if we end up signing them in the future the near future and yeah that's kind of how the roster's shaping up at the moment Lindholm is the goalie we decided to go with but hasn't really developed all that well unfortunately so we'll be looking at Mike Georgievic or Georgievich however you want to say his name and well you know we didn't do too bad to be completely honest i'm fairly happy with how the team performed this year all right guys so advancing forward to the draft now we're gonna see who ends up winning the cup um i think i've got the majority of the picks laid out here and i think i know who we're gonna trade with but we'll, we'll kind of play it as we go by the draft not entirely sure how it's gonna go and we got a contract offer here okay so we can go back to quebec city perfect that's what we want to do so um moving forward now okay we oh the, the leafs won the cup okay it didn't show there but toronto wins the cup and ontario the ontario rain win the calder there so 
let's just go in, recap some awards, and go from there. So, um, first things first, the Toronto Maple Leafs must have gone through Carolina, and then they go through Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota makes the finals already. Wow, that's crazy. So, yeah, I don't know if I necessarily thought Minnesota was going to make it to the finals before us, but they do, and can't really say anything about that. Like, good for them, right? So, um, as far as awards go here, obviously, um, Toronto wins the Cup, San Jose with the Presidents, Minnesota with the Clarence, and Toronto with the Prince of Wales. Ovechkin wins the Art Ross this year. The heart goes to Mitch Marner, okay. John Carlson wins the Norris. Um, William Nylander wins the Lady Bing. Connor Bedard wins the Calder this year. That's good to see. Mitch Marner with the Conn Smythe. Ilya Sorokin with the Vesna. Uh, Freddie Anderson wins the Jennings this year. Um, Marco Scandella wins back-to-back -back Bill Mastertons, okay. Uh, the Jack Adams goes to Calgary's coach. Uh, Barkov wins the Selkie, the Lindsay goes to Marner, and the Rocket goes to Ovechkin. Alright, so hitting the calendar, we're going to go all the way up to... I believe we want to go up to draft interviews. So, just get through some simulation quickly. Looks like we already got a decent amount of tickets sold for next season. And Winnipeg's going to win... Winnipeg's going to win the lottery. Seattle moves from 6 to 2 and the Islanders move down, ooh, from 1 to 3. That stings cuz there's a franchise player there too. We fail our goal, not winning the Stanley Cup. And what can you do really, right? Um so yeah, this is just going to be an insane draft. If you can't really tell here, I am kind of planning on trying to trade up for this guy. Ed Bomeister looks like a fantastic defenseman um that we could potentially acquire here. So, Retiring players, let's check them out. See who's available. And Joe Thornton calls it quits. Um, that's really about it. Nobody else. Huge names there. We lose Paul Stastny, obviously. We were going to take a look at him. We also lose Louis Erickson to retirement as Quebec, which is okay. Um, that clears actually a decent amount of cap space off the books, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we already let that cap space go. I can't remember. Um, so that's skaters, and then for goalies, Devin Dubnik, Carter Hutton, call it quits, okay. Alright, so, uh, we are going to do draft interviews, see what we can get out of our players I've got scouted, and then I will be back with you guys to do the draft. Alright, so advancing a day, I think we are ready to go here. I pretty sure I know what I want to do here um, as far as trades and things like such go. We don't want to let go of Pedersen or even like Williams. The guys we want to add to the block are going to be more so along the lines of Jurasek, Gaucher. Um, I think I might have found a guy that's going to replace Gaucher and be absolutely fantastic in the future if we can acquire him. Um, and he's also a pretty big body too, so um, without any real further ado, maybe we go, uh, maybe Bergeron, I, I don't know, I don't know if we're going to add any of those guys to the block, but if they come up in fine trades, we will probably go for that, so let's get to it here, I'm excited for this draft, and well, let's see what we can pull off, so to give you guys an overview or rundown of this draft, we're not aiming for any picks higher than around pick 10 or so. Um, looks like Winnipeg is offering there. Um, but even though not all teams are looking to potentially trade picks either here, we are going to make some deals. Um, we have pick 26. We have a bunch of second rounders too. So, so I've got some trades, I think, planned out. I'm not, not certain on this yet, but... The other guy I saw in here was Connor Geeky, who actually is looking kind of like Gaucher as far as, yes, he's got unstoppable force, but he hasn't really grown, which is too bad, because at pick nine, you know, he should probably be a pretty decent player. He should be playing kind of like Trevor Zegras in the next three years or so. Um, but yeah, anyways, um, we're not actually going with any of these guys here. McTavish, he, McTavish hasn't grown too well, but... Um, I'll show you the picks quickly for what we've got. Um, we only really have pick number 26. 
maybe 41 we'll keep as well um and then you know we'll keep some of these later picks but not all of them either um i'm looking to probably toss away a couple of these picks as well in trades so let's get to it we've got a huge prospect pool to explore here um and all of the guys that i've got scouted seem to look really really interesting as prospects um so here's what we're looking at so a guy like shanahan is nhl ready um could potentially be an offensive defenseman at 6-4 unlikely but but potentially still there um strong although he's 19 looks like a good pick for 71 or so Dvorak's a question mark I don't know if we're gonna take him or if we're gonna end up taking um who's the other guy in here that I was looking at Ortiz is the guy that I think is gonna be Gaucher's replacement just as far as he's NHL ready um and he looks like he could be a sweet addition to this team but yeah we might potentially end up taking Ed Bomeister too, if I can trade up that high. Um, so let's get to some fine trades here. So we've got three teams I'm going to target this offseason. Um, the first one being the Columbus Blue Jackets because they just uh, they maintain the highest available pick that we're going to be trying to trade for. That being pick number seven. I hit X. Ah, too bad. Now I got to reset it. Okay. So after my absolute gaff yet again on the controls of this game <laughs> um let's go back yet again and add assets number picks number seven and pick number 39 and what do we got to offer barrett hayton not actually that bad a price um jerasek and Lati is probably better i would like to not give up barrett hayton since he's looking like an absolute sweet addition to this team so let's go with jurasek i'm okay with tossing jurasek off to the wolves in columbus but i would potentially like to hold on to lawson kraus as well because he has been pretty decent for this team so in this deal um i wrote it down here let's try tossing pick 58 in here with this okay that should be enough to get the deal done, and it does. Okay, beautiful. Um, so that is the first trade we want to make. We acquire pick number th 7 and 39, two very top-end picks. Um, I don't think Winnipeg's getting a trade here, unfortunately, so they will just end up with, uh, what's his name, Grant? Graham Gregory. They're going to end up with Gregory Karkner, who looks like an absolute monster. Like, how do you score 118 points in just 68 games? He was almost a goal a game. Um, yeah, Winnipeg, I would not be complaining too, too much if I were you. This guy is going to be the future of your franchise. So, anyways, we got pick seven, and the next pick I want to go with... Okay, so we're going to try Nashville, too, because they have pick number 13, who is around the range, or which is around the range that we're looking for. They somehow acquired own power, um, but I would also like pick number... 33 off of their asset pool and i think in exchange for this we're going to be looking more actually i don't know what we're going to be looking for i think i want to find a trade for those two picks i don't know why i went to offer trade that's my mistake but let's go back up to the preds go hey what is it going to take to get your first two picks of this draft off of you and they'll be like Oh, yeah, just Tarasenko, Patrick, and Tim. Jesus. Okay. Or Giroux. Do I want to give up Giroux? I don't think I do. Um, Tarasenko now? Maybe. That's a potential deal, but I also don't want to give up Soderstrom. So, I would say... Oh, oh boy, this is not great. Okay, I don't really want to give up any of these guys, to be completely honest with you. Um, this is not looking spectacular. So, instead, can we go, like, Nathan Gaucher and, like, anybody else? Oh, boy. Um, Tim Bodie looks sick. Can we do a cap dump of, like, Bergeron or Giroux in this deal, too? I would love that. Yeah, we could. Um, do we want to turn Bergeron into a one-year rental? I mean, if he's going to cost 11 mil, we could potentially add more depth to the team in other areas with that money. Sure, let's do that. Okay. 
Gaucher and Bergeron for two picks? Yes, please. I will take that all day. Heck yeah. Okay. So that's actually a fantastic trade as well. I'm surprised we got him for that cheap. All right. Um, Seattle's going to make their pick here. Ooh, Kudrak is a very nice player too. A little surprised at how good he looks. Um, okay, okay. So we got that first pick. But um, I still got one more pick I want to acquire here. And we're going to try to sway a deal with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Maybe get an extra little bit off of them. Besides pick 23 if we can. Maybe some futures. I would not mind getting their first rounder next year too. If we could potentially get two of those. But what I want to offer here is I want to go like pick number 52. Um, toss a bunch of picks in here. So I'd like to get rid of like pick... Maybe 186, like 120, and um, I want all of these picks. We're going to use all of these picks, but we can toss those in the deal along with um, preferably some lower end guys, maybe like Nolan Patrick and like, I don't know. I'm sure they'll want a defenseman too. I don't know if I can actually toss a defenseman in here, but we can. Okay. For two first-rounders, trading Patrick Wallander and three meh picks. Um, yeah, let's try it. And trade rejected. Okay, so the value's not quite there. Fair enough. Fair enough. It was a little bit of a reach on our part. But if we can get your second-rounder next year, then we'll strike a deal. Let's go. Okay, that's actually a really, really good deal. I'm very happy with that one. All right, so at this point, I do believe we now possess all the picks that I would like to operate this draft successfully, and um, big stretch, big stretch in the middle of the video. Okay, let's let's go for it. I think I think that's as many picks as we're going to acquire, and we ended up acquiring in just three trades. We ended up picking up one, two, three, four, five, six picks in exchange for. Two elite prospects, um, Bergeron, Laddie, Patrick, Wallander. Okay, not not terrible. Not terrible, honestly. So, let's simulate up to pick seven. Um, Callahan, Kruger, Lukes, all decent players. Rasmussen is an 80 overall defenseman there. Um, so, now the question is, do we take Ed Bomeister? He looks like a potentially really good defenseman. He's got A-rated skating, uh, Thunderclap too. Yeah, he's he's an offensive defenseman. There's no question about that in my mind. The only question for me really is, is Byron Potty going to be there at pick 13? I don't know if he is. Um, but if we get the Vorak, I'm not going to be super upset either. I would like to get a forward and def a defenseman. Um, and we are taking a risk by doing this. So we're going to go with Ed Bomeister. Um, oh, he's only 77 overall. I thought he was going to be like an 81. Oh, that's not great, but I, I guess it's okay. He's got elite edges and off the rush. So not exactly what was advertised, but that's okay. So simulating over to pick 13. And oh my goodness, you did not just take Kasivi. Oh, really? Oh my goodness. Okay, but Dvorak went at pick 11 too. So... Oh, Nyquist was elite, and so was Draper. What the heck? Oh, man. Okay. Um, we missed out on some snipers. No question about that. Um, Molson is a power forward. Doesn't have any X-Factors, interestingly enough. Wyatt Draper's got shut down, though, as a forward. That's not something you usually see. Okay. Um, so we actually have options here. I, how good is Henrietus? Um, he's also... We want a right winger or do we want a left winger? I think I want the left winger with more X factors probably over just ankle breaker. Uh, I guess he's only got bouncer, but he's six foot four. Okay. And he scored 79 points. Um, yeah, I will settle for Byron Potty over um, Sammy, Sammy, Samu, Henry Yetis, or whatever his name is there. And he's still available. <laughs> oh my god. I'm pretty sure he's like 80 overall as well. Okay, how, what, the, what, if he makes it to pick 19, we're going to trade for him. Okay, jeez. Ottawa gets a steal of a pick there. At number 16, Henrietus, or Henritius, sorry, Sammy Henritius. Looks like an awesome pick there. 
I knew he was NHL ready, and I was just like, um, hello, is anybody going to pick this guy? Took forever to pick him, oh my goodness, but that's not the last NHL ready guy in the first round even, so... We're looking at Grayson Ortiz. He looks like an absolute monster. 65 points in 68 games as an 18-year-old. Got a ton of A-pluses across the board. And as a power forward at 6'1", 204 pounds, we're taking him. And he's 79 overall. Oh my goodness gracious. For pick number 23, potentially going to be one of the best picks we ever make in this series honestly at pick 23 that's that's insane and now we got pick 26 where we are going to be taking uh who's up next kubina yeah philip or peter sorry peter kubina another nhl ready center i'm not gonna ask any questions simply because if it says nhl ready they're gonna be decent decent overall anyways the potential might not be there but who cares when you get an 81 overall medium six playmaker? Oh my goodness. And he's got quick draw. With 79 faceoffs. Oh my god, Peter Kubina is going to be playing this year in the team. He is like literally the best player that we've drafted this draft. And we've already picked four potentially NHL ready players. Well, three others. So, over to round number two. And let's see who else gets picked in here. Oh, and Shanahan got picked. No, I wanted Shanahan. Dang it. All right, well, Shanahan was the guy I was going to pick, and Toronto just absolutely screws us over for the second time this episode. Ouch. Um, thank you so much for that. I guess we'll go with Jody Ma then. Um, not exactly the pick I wanted to make. Yeah, okay, we'll go with Jody Ma. I thought we were getting Todd Shanahan for sure. Okay. Yeah, it is what it is. So, Jody Ma from the Oil Kings is a, okay, 70 overall defensive defenseman. Not exactly 77 overall, unfortunately, but Toronto makes a great pick there. So, can't really blame him for that. Oh my god, he cannot skate. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Alright, so that did put a slight dampen on things. I thought for sure that we were going to end up with, uh, with what's his name there. I thought for sure we were going to get Shanahan first pick of the second round. That would have been sweet. But we still got Mike Georgievich lined up. Um, and what can you say? He's he's an elite goalie. Six foot one. And he's a butterfly. Okay. 64 overall. Oh my god, he's got five superstar abilities. Oh, this guy's going to be such a sweet goalie in the future. I am so looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. What a pick that is. Okay, over to pick number 41. We skip one pick and lose Jody Jody McKenna. No, it's Jesus or Jesus McKenna, however you want to call his call uh, that player. Um, okay, who are we taking here? I'm thinking Chelios probably is our best option, but knowing my luck... Felipe Obin is going to end up just being a sick winger or something like that. So anyways, we're going with Chelios. I don't care. 63 overall two-way defenseman. Um, hopefully he can skate. Uh, he can skate a little bit better, but he's not like Shanahan, who's just like, man, I wish we had picked Shanahan. Should have traded with Toronto. Like, look at that. Three and a half star, almost four star skating at 18 years old. Like, oh, I wish. Okay. Anyways, um... Chelios was decent. Not a bad pick by any means, but who cares? We have nailed picks this draft. Ooh, Kluber Taunts was nice. Pedersen was nice. Oh my goodness, there were so many nice picks. Um, all right, and over to round three now. We're looking at pick number 67. And I think we missed an elite goalie. Yeah, we did. Uh, Sven, yeah, Sven Johansson. Oh, he's got contortionist too. Oh no, Columbus, you have absolutely... Nailed that pick. Oh, and made us look silly taking Djordjevic. Potentially in the future, anyways. Um, obviously, Djordjevic is still going to be a set goalie. But um, with, yeah, pick 39 as well, he's expected to be. So, up next, I'm skipping over Zach Lane, Shane Surrey, all these other guys. And I am taking Marvin Strong. I've just got a good feeling about him. I know we've taken a lot of defensemen now, too. But better safe than sorry. And he's a 67 overall. 19 year old defensive defenseman again can't skate but he can shoot he can defend he's got puck skills 
All right, not not terrible by any means. Um, I'm very happy still with how this has turned out. And moving forward a bit more here, who's our next pick? Pick 90, we're looking at, I'm going to say Cam Bishop. Absolutely, that is the guy we're looking at. A-plus puck control, or A-rated puck control anyways on a goalie. That's not bad. And he's 55 overall medium elite hybrid. Let's go. Okay. No X-factors, unfortunately. Um... But yeah, his puck control, athleticism is all there. His reflexes might need some work. But over to pick number 101 now. And this is where things get a little less straightforward. I mean, I, I've got Powell pinned out, but we're taking a risk on Powell. There's Matthew Leroy. There's also, like, Toscala. There's, there's a bunch of guys that look really good in here, but I'm going to stick with my scouts' intuition. They've been pretty dang good so far. And Powell's a medium elite too. Let's go. Oh my goodness gracious. What an absolutely amazing pick. Again, round four, pick five, pick 101. And we get a medium elite power forward who has the potential to maybe grow into an NHL role. Ooh, we miss. Hey, that's a pretty nice rated starter, Russ Jeffrey. Anyways, um, pick 124 now. And I've got Kreshman. Christoph Kreshman pinned out here. Um, would mesh well in any locker room. He's a very well-rounded personality. That's that's what we like to hear. And hopefully he's elite. And he's not, but he's a 57-rated medium starting goalie. Not bad by any means. Not the greatest save percentage or anything like that. But he's got the potential, and that's all that matters in this game. So, over to, what are we at now? Pick number... 154 yes sir um we are going to go woo brush here that's a nice defenseman too bad we missed him would have been a nice pick over crushman potentially but all right we're at pick 154 and i don't know who we're taking um Our guy totally got picked already. That's what happened. Who took Chapman? Oh, you took Chapman. Oh, Edmonton. That's mean. Okay. Had another guy pinned out. We don't get him because yeah, because another team picked him first. So we're going to take Mikhail Vasiliev instead. And okay. Oh, wow. Okay. He's actually a better pick. He's a medium top nine sniping center at 64 overall that's beautiful and i believe if i'm not mistaken looking through my graphs here or my charts um that mikhail vasiliev is the first ever russian-born player that we have drafted to this team so we'll see if he can set a good tone for russian players or maybe a bad one who knows so over now to pick number 180 and we're down to our last couple players here, so. Um, Marshall Cogliano is not the guy we're planning on picking. These are the last three guys I'm looking at. So, I know they're all in the 200s range. I don't care. I'm going to take Cameron Menard as our best option here. Okay, and he's a medium 9 sniper again. Um, this time a winger, and he is undersized. But you never know. He might grow up to an 81, 82 overall by the time he's at his peak and uh, maybe he does make the Quebec Nordiques roster at some point I don't think so honestly just the way we're drafting the way players are developing on this team too there's not going to be a ton of opportunity but on to our last two picks we're at pick 200 I'm going to take Rocky Cam Beats here 43 points in 61 games over Winquist with just two so Let's go with Cam Beats, and he is a 54 rated low elite to a forward. Not bad by any means for pick number 200. And then we've got pick 218. Engren, not a bad defenseman there either, but honestly, it has not been a super, super deep draft, to be completely honest. So, uh, we're going to go with Winquist over Fox and a bunch of those other guys. I just got a good feeling about him, mainly because his name is the same as mine as far as Ethan goes. And he's a low elite. Beautiful. And he's not just that. He's a big body, too. Six foot three, 197 pounds for a playmaking winger. Who knows? Maybe he actually develops with the Rockets. 
But anyways, that is going to conclude this draft. Doesn't look like anybody gets too many other great picks, but by round, man, like f the first round was easily our best round, no question. But to be completely fair, the second round treated us not too poorly either. If we had ended up landing um, Todd Shanahan one pick later, that would have been fantastic. We get Strong and Bishop in the third. Powell and Kreshman in the fourth. That's so good. Vasiliev in the fifth isn't bad. Menard in the sixth, pretty decent. And then Cambitz and Winquist in the seventh. My goodness, what a draft that was for the Nordiques. Not the best one we've ever had, but not bad. Again, really solid. All right, so honestly, I think that's where we're going to wrap up the video here. Um, I think we'll get through the off season and the majority of like the re-signing phase here in this uh in this upcoming video because we got guys like Giroux and Hayton who have really taken steps on this team and we're gonna have to pay them fortunately we have 40 million dollars available in cap space and we don't necessarily have to re-sign guys like Stahl Larson would be an intelligent re-signing um Kubina is gonna be sweet I'm really looking forward to him making an impact on this team. Um, same with, like, Potty as well. He's already NHL ready. He's going to be sweet. Um, yeah, there's there's just a ton of good players on this team. Ortiz as well. Um, and then we've got a couple defensemen here that are in the system that look like they might actually grow. So that's always good to see um guys like bow meester brewer is going to be sweet or is going to be sweet we've got a got a fantastic young core here there's no doubt in my mind about that and as we go further down the list obviously guys like pavel semen haven't really taken the steps yet but hopefully they will in the near future uh we'll have to re-sign morrissey and a few other guys goaltending again i'm not really worried about I, i've got a lot of faith in the guys that we've brought in here recently and you know honestly it's the same kind of feeling throughout the majority of the lineup as far as this team's going to be fine we just need to you know put the right pieces together and actually get the results to win a cup that's that's just what it's going to come down to at the bottom line joe pavelski dropped it right off this year unfortunately but um but yeah, that's where we're going to conclude this one. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and leave comments to let me know what your thoughts are, how you think we should uh, play out the re-signing phase. I mean, when you look through here at the pending free agents, I don't actually know who's available. Looks like Matthews Kane Giroux. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness me. So many good players. Um, but yeah, let me know who we should go after. You can see the list here. We're going to have some excess cap space, um, without a doubt in my mind. So let me know who you think we should be pursuing in this off season. Obviously there's going to be some probably decent goalies as well. Um, Sorokin would be, he would stack our goaltending. No question about it. He played absolutely fantastic this past season and well, previous Vesna winner would not hurt to bring into the team if Buffalo for whatever foolish reason does not re-sign him but yeah that's where we're gonna be wrapping it up and until next time